Welcome mm. in to episode 59 of the Avids and Beyond. My name is Todd Emanuele. Very special guest joining me today. I have, sounds like a whole bunch of guests because I want you to welcome in to the show the drivers, manager, sound guy, tech support, caterers, mechanic, personal trainers, lighting designers, uh, booking agents, social media managers, set designers, psychologists, and Whoa. mother and stepfather of the Bernie sisters. <laughs> wow. April Bernie Schaefer and John Schaefer. Guys, thank you so much for coming on this week. Oh my gosh, such an honor to Absolutely. hang out with you. Did I did and I also miss... send me that list so I can put it on my resume? Yeah, right. Did I did I miss any titles? I probably did. Probably, but <laughs> it's all right. We're good. So, We're good. What's going on? You guys have been like up to nothing. I know you've just been sitting around doing nothing and just yeah, it's been lazy around. days around here. Yeah. <laughs> And if you're watching on YouTube right now, we see boxes behind you and you guys aren't using U-Haul, but t tell tell me what's going on. You guys are in the process of doing some stuff. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We've been moving. So you're in, yeah. you're in Missouri right now still for now. Correct. Yes. For another couple of weeks. Is it a couple? Oh, so how, what are you doing? Are you just living out of boxes at this point right now? Well, we're actually putting everything in boxes right now. We're yeah. living out of basically suitcases and we're about to take our bed frame apart. So the mattresses will be on the floor and we'll <laughs> be, yeah, the, the truck is coming Friday. So we've got to have everything in the truck between Friday and Tuesday. And then from Tuesday until the 12th or 13th, we will be literally sleeping on mattresses on the floor and living out of suitcases. Wow. But also we have our RV in the front. So, well, right. that's, so we know yeah. how to live out of that. <laughs> Someone's got to drive that to, to where, where are you heading to? I don't want to give it away. Did, did you want to give it away yet? Oh, Huntsville, Alabama. I guess you've kind of said that publicly where you're going. <laughs> so what's, what's in Huntsville that's so exciting? Um, it's the Bernie sisters eventually. Right, right. I mean, there are a lot of things. In fact, like we just found out the other day, a couple months after we get there, they're doing their first big festival there. So oh, nice. we've been trying to get the girls onto that. The um, people that work with Lollapalooza and stuff are, are doing really? a first festival in Huntsville in September. So we're, of course, we're um, telling everybody to do a shout out um, on their yeah. inquiry, um, you know, for who should play there because we love work, to be able to do that. Like, did they already book this like a year ago or can you actually get into it somehow? No, we can. I think there's actually room. Yeah, they, they, they're oh, still nice. trying to get some. Yeah, I think they've got a, probably the headliners lined up, but mm -hmm. some local and regional acts are trying to get get on. So and we're kind of nobodies in that area just because we have never played um, in Alabama. So, For you now. know, why not, though? We'll just we'll put our hat in the ring and see how it goes. Well, you're going to have <laughs> enough people reach out and be like, Listen, you got to put these girls on on the bill because they are going to be a household name. I I know you guys know that deep down inside. You won't you won't say that because there's still a lot they've got to do. But yeah, but I mean, you know, we're moving for a reason. You know, yeah. we're trying to get closer to Nashville and yeah. um, you know, let those girls uh, learn how to uh, really develop their chops for songwriting and the industry and such. So we're gonna dig in when we get out there. How close to Nashville is Huntsville? A little less than two hours. So that's not bad. That's not bad. No, no, it's not bad at all. So you'll be hopping hopping in the RV and driving into Nashville quite often, I imagine. Yeah, frequently, yes. Are they going to, like, uh, busk on the streets and stuff like that? Are you going to do some of that stuff? Um, or are you going to avoid know if, that? Um, well, I mean, it's certainly not off the table, you know. We'll, yeah. we'll do whatever... Um, you know, to keep it fresh, but uh, the girls have got a lot of recording to do. And so in January, they did their first um, single as the duo. And right. then uh, the first week of May, they're going to do their second. So uh, we're working with a team to strategize how to um, campaign and push that out. That's something that I don't have a lot of background in because we've basically been boots on the ground, just booking shows and going and working the shows and that kind of thing, traveling all over the country and um, that kind of thing. But the the whole industry strategy thing on um, that kind of stuff, I'm I'm going to gain an education myself going out there. So I guess you kind of already have. I mean, you're learning on the fly how to do this whole thing. But what has it all been like? Like, I mean, this is your life now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's crazy, right? But yeah. you're doing it for a, you're doing it for a good reason. But for it's sure. craziness. 
it's a it's a crazy basically just like you said on the fly education it's we are learning as we go and you know every little bit is you know we we were just looking at pictures the other day of our first trailer but before the trailer even it was she had a traverse yeah i remember filled, this yeah she filled the back of the traverse with stuff and then when i uh was part of the picture i had a pathfinder and it wouldn't quite fit in the back and so we bought a little cargo platform put on the back of there and we bought an itty bitty trailer and then a little bit bigger trailer. And now we have this trailer. It just keeps, and every, every, I say every year, but like almost every show, we're learning something either about the show or about booking or about traveling or, and it's always- Repair, a, repair, repair. Right, repair. Right, right. <laughs> that was one of my questions for you, John. Like, were you always handy or are you literally learning on the fly how to do stuff? Because you are fixing everything constantly yeah. it seems like it's a little bit of you know growing up poor i had a lot of shitty car can i say that on that yep, you can uh, say whatever you want on here <laughs> um so you know it's just out of necessity you learn how to either troubleshoot or if you you know that's what youtube's out what for is. too youtube's there for a reason <laughs> correct and well well i didn't have that as a well that, kid, that's teenager, true. but that's uh, right. but yeah now it's you know the the rv is a little different you know, I, when I first got it, I'm like, hey, it's a car and a house. I can do either, but it's a very big <laughs> car and a very small house. Um, but yeah, there's been some, some scary, you know, the, the brakes was, that was the first. I hadn't done dually wheels before and yeah, the back end of that thing is almost 20,000 pounds. So it was, wow. uh, yeah, a lot. And of him right underneath it, <laughs> <laughs> me just sweating like, oh, oh I hope he's gosh. got everything secure, you know. I really, April, I really hope you are planning on writing a book about this. Be I, I'm dead serious. I always post stupid comments about, oh, chapter 8,000, whatever, because <laughs> everything that you guys have, have happened to you on the road, you're going to look back at someday and laugh about it first. But it's just, I think people are going to want to hear about this someday, like the beginning of the Bernie sisters, how this all came about and your adventures on the road, because You've seen a lot. It's only been a few years, really. Uh, yeah. And you got a lot of traveling and a lot of adventures still to come. Imagine what's going to happen next. My gosh. Oh, I can't even. I think all we're worried about now is that I'm 50 and I may not have the memory to write a book. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what Facebook is for. Hey, we all have Facebook. Together. Right. Just hopefully, Just go Facebook, back and read hopefully Facebook sticks around so you don't. Yeah, have that exactly. But I know TikTok some... is on the chopping block is what I hear. Yeah, man, we can't lose TikTok. Mm -mm. We can't lose TikTok. We just got started. I know. And you guys started me on it too. Not that I'm doing anything fun on there, but uh, <laughs> but your daughter's starting their TikTok inspired me to start my TikTok for this. That's show. so cool. Yeah. So look at that. They're inspiring people too. But uh, I love it. <laughs> there's so much stuff going on with you guys. So tell me about once once you get out there, are you touring? Are they going to tour before you move or are you just kind of staying put for now and Rest oh yeah, we're moving in two weeks, so there's no no touring. Oh, yeah, before that. Gosh. Okay. yeah, and I kind of um, <laughs> I should have been booking way before now, but I think I just I I knew for like a year now that we were going to consider a move, and if we were going to do it, we just had to dig in and do it. Right. But I didn't know when that was going to happen, so I was real nervous about booking tours and things like that that might get interrupted by. Right. That's the move right. or had to be canceled or anything like that. So I just really allowed myself to kind of slow down and focus on what we need to get done first. So I intend to just like pull out all the stops afterward. And we have a pretty, a pretty decent um, tour coming up um, June, July. Yeah, June, so, July, maybe a little August. Bit August. Yeah. Where are you guys heading? Um, uh, well, I think the, the first anchor stop is Boulevardia in Kansas City. And then from there, we're doing the Taos, uh, show for Avitz and then wait a minute then, what do you mean you're doing that show well yeah we're, well, oh, well we're we not, wish we wish don't get too excited we're doing a fan <laughs> show the day before yeah a house yeah, show. show okay and yeah. then we're gonna go to the tower show and then i think we're gonna do one of the press on things at red rocks oh nice uh, and then oh. we're there for those three days Look of those that. shows mm -hmm. right and then i think and is it michigan or wisconsin i think we're going to michigan at that point and uh, then wisconsin 
Yes. And this and then Wisconsin. And then after that, just kind of, you know, making our way back here, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got to fill in all those points, of course. So we that's those are the anchor points for that particular tour. And it's going to be it's it, probably a couple months. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the boulevard is mid June. So we'll probably leave Huntsville at the beginning of June and, and make our way to Kansas City. And then uh, the uh, mile of music is August the first bit of August. So, you know, we'll, we will get, we'll probably get back down here about my birthday, probably <laughs> a little before. Yeah, you better uh, get that RV up and running and keep it running and hope that- Well, I mean, everything's wrong. replaced now, so it should be <laughs> right. That's true. You have replaced a lot of that, haven't you? <laughs> the tires are something you really got to worry about with one of those, don't you? Well, yeah, I was doing the brakes and we pulled the tires. As I was pulling the tires off, there was a dry rot in between all of the treads. That happens a lot. I, I See, I don't know, but I've heard that. The tires that were on there were pretty cheap. Oh, and okay. um, we were told that they're brand new, but I think the brand new he was speaking of was in mileage. <laughs> And generally, regardless of miles, every five years you got to replace those tires, um, especially if you're not driving it all the time. Right. But, yeah. So that's and if they they rot like that, they could pop on you. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, we had one blow. Yeah, that was scary. I mean, okay. it sounded like something landed on the RV. We were all scared to death, and then um, and then the side that it blew on was. Um, on the side of the busy highway that was just like going nuts. So oh he had to kind of like figure out, like go back there to figure things out. And we weren't sure how to handle it. And then of course I posted um, on my Facebook and then somebody was like, you know, you can still limp off if you go really slow, you know, towards an exit. So we did, but we also saw that across the way there was a tire, um, like a, it's a truck a, repair center just yeah. right on the outer road. Right? That was so lucky. Yeah, what are the and odds so, of that? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it was just right there, but I mean, we had to wind down off the exit and then back through some stuff, but I mean, it was nighttime, so everything was closed. So we just like spent the night in front of their place <laughs> until we could get it fixed. But yeah. that's, that's why they do dually wheels on stuff like that, right? So if you yeah. blow one out, you can still limp to wherever you have to go. Um, right, right. Yeah, luckily it wasn't one of the front tires. That would have been... Geez, oh, don't, yeah, don't even say that out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not even funny. Um, all right, and your, your fan, the Avid fans are so awesome. Like if you post oh something in one of the groups, someone's going to help you guys out. Uh, yep. You've gotten Always. so in with everyone from the beginning. Yep. Uh, it's such an amazing group of people. And mm -hmm. they, they're always going to be there to help you guys. That's got to feel good that you feel that. great. I love them so much. They are <laughs> like, they have taken care of us all over the nation, even um, came up to Canada <laughs> to great. see us. I mean, yep. yeah, anytime we need anything, we know there's someone somewhere, somewhere and, and everyone just acts like we're already their family. You as are. Soon as we That's see the them. thing. It's everyone's like family and yeah. they treat you like family and that's got to be comforting that no matter where you are, someone is going to be close and, and help you out. I just, I think that's and, great. And even if they aren't, they find a way to help out anyway. Right? I mean, yeah, it's... they'll find someone that's a friend or whatever and say, Hey, yeah. help these people out. They're, they're good people. I know. I, t I, I tell everybody that the Avids are amazing people and they'd give you their spleen if you needed it. <laughs> they probably would. <laughs> um, so the girls are resting their voices right now, uh, getting ready to to play. Are they itching to to get on a stage, or are they happy to have a little time off right now? Uh, they've got a little time off, but we we are doing a a couple of farewell shows here in Columbia. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, a couple of the a couple of clubs came a call and it was like, you can't leave without you know <laughs> having one more show before you right. go. Right. And of course, we're like, how? I don't even know how we can get this in because usually when you do a show, there's several hours of prep getting there, a couple of hours of doing the show, and then a couple of hours of leaving. So it's a good chunk of the day to do a show. And, um, you know, and if we're doing two shows, that means there's two days and this last little bit that we can't be cleaning or doing this other stuff. So, but, um, you know, like he said, the truck will be coming this week. So I think that's going to free us up a lot to not have to be worried about packing anything um, in those last, you know, I guess week, week and a half. So we'll just be cleaning. So I think we can focus and focus on our friends and, and yeah, um, you know, relax a little bit. 
definitely. Now, it doesn't strike me as you guys are the type to, like when the girls have downtime, which doesn't happen very often, you don't have to force them to practice or do any of that stuff. Or you don't have to crack the whip and be like, come on, you got to, you know, stay in shape here. Uh, of course we do. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Do you <laughs> sometimes have we do. Okay. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes they really do need to just be girls and do other things like they're, they've been right. spending some time with um, one of their close friends here because they're not going to get to see, yeah. see her as often. So, um, but she also has um, joined us for a few shows in the past. And I mean, you may have seen her, her name is Shirai. Uh, but she has an amazing voice amazing yeah. voice so um the girls really enjoy singing with her and they just you know they have uh these visions of her um you know joining them a lot in the future we'll see how that goes so that would um be cool. she'll she'll join us for at least one of these shows on the farewell so is that something that could possibly happen are you like breaking bernie news right here that you could possibly no, well, go back to uh a trio of sorts. <laughs> I think it's going to be up to them at some point, but yeah. right now I'm just trying to encourage them to really um, anchor so. the two. Yeah. And, you know, so that they can feature lots of artists. I mean, even if it's one artist that they feature a lot, and that's wonderful, but I want it to always come back to the Bernie sisters. Um, just, I want them to have that, you know? Can, can I just say, hearing them the last couple of years grow, has been amazing. Like I, I got to see you guys in person several months ago uh, in New York here. And uh, just hearing them live in front of me was like, wow, they've come so far in yeah. such a short amount of time. Like it's Emma still not is, a year yet. Right. Right. I, she, <laughs> she's a powerhouse. And yeah. Bella's voice has come so far. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and young, it's, it's, so I mean, obviously maturing happens and that's what's happening with their voice. Sure. They sound great. She's together. a whole 14 now. Yeah, I so. know. Yeah, she's oh, that's a whole right. 14. The birthday was yesterday. Happy yeah. birthday to Bella. She, but uh, it's, it is amazing to watch them and just like this is a like almost a homeschool thing that I observe where I'm like, wow, in one year. Like they like they've come so far. There's been so many experiences it's amazing. and so so much growth. And yeah, even I even watching Emma grow over time, like one year's time would would have been was like night and day. So I'm really excited to see what's gonna go on with um, Bella, especially because Bella um, is going to to start working with people in Nashville where the other girls had not, I mean, and, and of course Emma will as well, but Emma didn't have that luxury earlier on. Right. right. So now it's like, they're going to pick up all this education. So I'm, I'm super excited to see in one year, you know, it's how they develop. Be, yeah. Even better. Cause I mean, they are so young uh, mm -hmm. that their voices still are. I mean, they're bound to change quite a bit more and the more practice and working with professionals obviously is going to help. A yeah, lot. I'm really excited to see what the next year, you know. Oh, so are we. Me too. I, I want to see them collaborate more and just kind of pick up and learn different, different things. I just, I'm excited about it. It's pretty I cool. Had, a couple weeks ago, I had the Way Down Wanderers on, at least Austin yeah! and John, and I <laughs> asked them if uh, they had thought of collabing with the Bernie sisters, and they <laughs> want to. They want to record with them. And, no way! And they well, want to write. We've done a lot of work with them. They want to write with you, with them, and they want to record with them. And they, I love that. They spoke very highly of the talent mm. and how much they want to be a part of their journey, and you know, be yeah. a part of that whole thing. So I love those boys. That happened. They're awesome. They're so good. Yeah. And they've got big changes coming right now, which yeah, yeah, they do. That was a shocker. Yeah, hearing that reminded me of what happened with the Bernie sisters too. Like, just it's a big change, and you wonder how it's going to work. And yeah. With the girls so far, it's worked beautifully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and Olivia is doing her thing too, right? She's she's playing her music and off doing her thing what what's mm. everything going on there is everything going good there with her as far as we know she's yeah. out there living life you know she's she posts from time to time some yeah. of the promotions of uh some of the music she's doing in town and she likes to do a lot of fashion and right. uh, yeah. fashion shows and things like that with her friends but yeah she's having a good time that's cool that's cool so yeah. way down wanderers want to work with the bernie sisters we have to make that happen okay have yeah that i'm happen. down all right uh so <laughs> 
uh, house concerts, as you travel around, are you, you, do you try to fill in holes with concerts at people's houses just to keep things going as you go around? Cause you're, you said you're going to be all over the country. So can people yeah. just reach out to you and be like, we want to host you? Well, I, typically I'll just, um, when we know we've got um, holes to fill, I'll just do a blast like on my page and I'll do one on the Bernie sisters page, yeah. just telling people where we'll be and that we're looking for a house concert if um, people are open to it. And we get a lot of um, leads that way. Yeah, I'm sure uh, if people hear that you're coming through, the Avid fans especially, be like, oh, yeah, come come play our mm -hmm. <laughs> And they're our favorite, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's just, um, I don't know, it just, the girls love it. It's just more intimate and people really pay attention. And it's just the best type of crowd to play to. You don't have to compete with, you know, noise or, you know, bar stuff and all that jazz you know like i mean of course we love all the different ways that um we get to play but that's that's pretty special the house it, concerts yeah it's got to be hard playing like in a bar if people are talking if you ever i don't know how it works being up there performing but that must be for me it would be hard to concentrate and remember yeah. lyrics and i'd be thinking it's, why are these people not listening to us <laughs> it's pretty amazing though the last the last few like venue venues that the girls have played people actually shut up that's like, awesome though that yeah like there's something. been some times like in a busy bar people are just like you know and mesmerized you know it depends on the song of course but you know some of the quiet stuff especially the one that uh, you know emma does by herself or something that's a little slower a little more uh heart-wrenching people just like those harmonies get people's attention. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, yeah. That's standout stuff. I mean, that's yeah. that's not everyday run of the mill singing that they do. They are no. above and beyond their age. And Thank you uh, it gets gets uh, gets people's attention, but you know there's still going to be people talking at shows a lot and Oh, for sure. Man, yeah, I, we were up. we were in Chicago in in this unique place and and he does cultivate it. it it's kind of like a what was it like a coffee slash bar um, but it, how many people could fit in there? Like 30 something? Yeah, 35. <laughs> it was super small, but he kind of sets it up sort of like a house concert sort of, but he warns me in the beginning. He's like now listen, these people can get rowdy because there's, I mean, there's like alcohol all over the walls. I mean, yeah. in terms of like bottles and stuff oh. like that. And he goes, it can get kind of rowdy. So it's really up to the girls to just capture their attention. And, right. and I'm like, well, yes, that's true. But if you set the tone and tell people this is a listening room experience, if you'd like to talk, step outside, you know, that's what a lot of people say with the house concert things. And he goes, well, you will see, you know, and I'm like, okay, whatever. So the girls just start playing. And um, there's not anyone talking, <laughs> like That's in the great. entire room. Yeah. It's totally quiet. And I'm like, yes. That's, that <laughs> but he was something. too. <laughs> yeah, he was back there with the video camera, like the whole time. I was like, yes, okay. You just Good. reminded me of seeing Jim Avid. I've been to a couple of Jim Avid shows, mm -hmm. and he tells the audience before he starts playing that there's no talking allowed. <laughs> and I, I find it hilarious. And like, if people get up and move during his show, he's like, where do you think you're going? And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> like, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> right? Someone had to leave once and he like was, he wasn't mean to him. He was being funny, but the, yeah. the person was embarrassed leaving because he called them out. So maybe oh, they, could start, no. they could start doing stuff like that. Be like, hey, where do you think you're going? Yeah. You guys be quiet. Back there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. So the girls are obviously talented singers. One thing I have wanted to ask you, April, since I met you, and I've never asked you this. Are you a singer? So I am a closet singer. Okay. <laughs> I always loved to sing when I was younger and I wanted to be a singer so i especially love harmonies and my mom kind of taught me that as okay. well so um i would always sing with the girls and of course they're homeschooled so we use a lot of music to help them memorize things sure. and to just make um lessons fun and things like that so when they started showing an interest in harmonies i kind of would show them where their harmony is in the song um, so when we're in the car, we're all finding our harmonies and just scream singing, you know, with each other. Those so, car rides must be awesome. It's I, I amazing. Be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I mean, we, of course we, someone is always singing in the house, you know, right. there's always someone singing, whether it's to be funny and dramatic <laughs> or just silly, you know, somebody's always singing and, and I love that. 
And it reminds me, a lot of people come to the merch table to tell me their, their um, history with music. And they'll be like, my mom used to never let me sing. She'd always like shush me. And I, that just breaks my heart. Oh, that's I'm awful. like, what child that sings is not happy? Like, I mean, kids are not going to sing unless they're happy. So like, yeah. if you shut that down, Can you imagine you know, telling and I, a kid not to sing? I couldn't even I imagine. know. Yeah, this person specifically was saying that they used to do dishes and sing while they did dishes and was told not to do that. But Ouch. I get that a lot in stories. And I just like, for That's me, bad. I want someone singing in every room. I don't care. Absolutely. It could be a different song. I don't even care. All right. So <laughs> if, if I have a guest on the show that can sing, they have to perform a song. So Whenever you're ready, you can sing us a song. Go ahead. <laughs> and and the other guests can play trumpet, I think. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'll touch that thing and it's all packed oh, away it's... anyway right now. Probably. Oh yeah. It's... <laughs> it's definitely... Yeah. My vocals are too. No, no. All right. So I won't make it. That's okay. But you know, you mentioned parents shutting kids down and not letting them sing and all this stuff. I find it awesome the support that you give your girls. Because how many kids that have this dream of wanting to be singers get as much support as you're giving them? Like you guys are traveling the country in an RV to support what they want to do for their lives. That's awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. I don't think many kids get that it, it, to this level, like to this. It's experience. a. It's a crazy, chaotic life. It is for some people, but it is not for others. <laughs> oh, it certainly is, especially at times. But it's it's all worth. It's so worth it. Every every second. It is. I mean, they are such independent, like free thinking. Like they, I don't know. I just I I've loved to watch them grow up, and I've loved to see like the things that the, how they express themselves. Yeah, they're all they're very like unique. I've never influenced them one bit on the way that they handle their music or you know their fashion or style, and they're just very you know unique. Self made. Yeah, that that's that's cool to hear that because then the other way is like you think that like the Jackson Five. Their parents were driving them and pushing them and forcing them to do all this stuff. And you haven't had to do that. This is just not on crazy. that. Not on that note, but well, I will a, tell you, that's pretty. Um, we've been doing this for seven years. And yeah. when they were younger, especially um, practice is not fun. Right. And of the course. business side of like, oh, I've got to go promote this. I've got to go do this. You know, the business side is not as fun as just creating the music, right. you know, so, you know, there it's, uh, we just put it into the curriculum. So Monday through Friday, um, they would have to go off on their own to do their own solo type work. And then um, the next hour they would uh, do, you know, they would be with their sisters. So basically two hours a day, every day was just built into the curriculum. Now they, we've gotten away from that particular thing for the past few months just because we've been so crazy busy and not right. tour yeah and right. tour and all that stuff but on tour you're kind of playing a lot anyway so you know they're they're able to do that i think now our focus is more towards songwriting um this year this this year up to now was like you know are they going to like our product as the new duo you know we're going to get out there and meet people and show them what we got. Great and I think stuff. people are responding, Absolutely. you know, really well to that. Yep. So now they're just going to need to just build those, build those songwriting chops, you know? So the single was recorded. When, when is that being released? Can you say that? Or do you um, yet? It well, what we're doing is we're going to um, go record the second one in okay. the first week of May. And we're, we've kind of um, aligned with the distribution company in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And he has lots of fun marketing ideas and things that he wants to do once <laughs> the other one gets mastered so that we can, uh, you know, do six week campaigns on those, those songs uh, while the girls are writing for the third um, single. So we're going to just keep, we're going to try to keep driving towards um, getting those singles out. So they're writing in the meantime and... Mm -hmm planning on releasing a full album i imagine here at some point eventually i think the the market is more towards singles at this time right but um 
after so many singles, we we can compile into an it album. It seems like or... everyone's doing that now. Like they'll release, yeah. you know, three, four singles, and then the album comes out, you know, down yeah. the road. And uh, I mean, right. that's you're going to grab people more that way, I think, than just throwing yeah. an album out there. Definitely, attention spans. Yeah, you could focus on the one song, like the Avids just released one song for now, and there's yeah. I think there's going to be a couple more singles that they put out, and then the mm -hmm. album comes out in May. And uh, I know I'm excited for that. I'm sure you guys are too. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just the way the industry seems to be going now, doing that that way. It's hard to make money selling records and CDs and stuff now. Everything's touring. Yeah. You make money off yeah. of touring. Touring, touring and merch. merchandise. Touring and merch, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> and you guys mm -hmm. definitely do the merch thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm, hey, look, I got my Bernie hey, on you know. right now. <laughs> I got old school. This yeah, is... that was their, one of their first ones right nice. there. Nice. You guys do so much by hand. Like, you make all the merch. That's yeah. Like, well, is that all packed we, away right now, or are you still working on it right now? Well, we, we have been uh, talking today because we have nothing for the farewell. Um, we just okay. have, like, the older shirts for the farewell. But um, we're thinking about creating a graphic that, you know, states something about the farewell or something and just selling like a limited run on that a good goodbye for now maybe instead right. oh good farewell. yeah yeah i like that because you'll be back you'll be yeah back to play shows i mean we'll be back through here in june for sure um, yeah there you go and you gotta and go to maybe. i know you guys always go to that dive bar i've never been there but i see you posting about eating there all the time and it makes yeah me all the time how it's do you guys eat, eat healthy we have like four minutes left here. I'm running out. Okay. <laughs> like you tour all over the place, but yet you still seem to eat healthy all the time. How do you pull that off? That's amazing in itself. We try. When we're here, we have we uh, we go through HelloFresh, and they you know they send meals. Um, yeah. They're not prepared. They just send all the ingredients and stuff. Right, and we got to sure. keep it up here. But when we're on the road, we just try. It's harder, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, we we try to uh, you know keep protein bars and, you know, have shake uh, materials available and, you know, just generally vegetables, vegetables and fruits foods. and stuff that we can. So you have it all, so you avoid just stopping at McDonald's. Yeah, anymore. Yeah, we, we definitely. And, you know, if we're, we're stopping in any place for any time, we can, you know, grab a, a spot at an RV park and, you know, you pull out the grill and, and do whatever. But And the girls love sushi. So if we can, if we can stop to have sushi, sometimes they're happy. So that's, that's barely better than that's a happy really meal or something yeah like that. right no, no, no. <laughs> that's their happy meal we haven't had fast food in like forever <clears throat> yeah good for you that's that's awesome i wish i could say the same um <laughs> all right so you're picking the music for the episode i know i don't know if you've totally discussed yet do you have in your head any songs that you can share with us that mean something yeah. to you that we're going to play around this here uh yeah we're uh luckiest man by wood brothers okay girls just um, covered that one Soul Vaccination, Tower of Power. Okay. Uh, Battle of Love and Hate is one of our favorites. Nice. Um, I like uh, Love's in Need of Love, a Stevie, Stevie Wonder tune. Beautiful. And then Say It to My Face, you know, the old school Bernie sisters, if you can find that. That's how we met. I mean, basically, that's what started us. <laughs> how, how did that, because uh, you were playing trumpet, right? Didn't it come Yeah, on there, it was for their CD release party. How, how did this, I mean, this is crazy, because it brought everything together. You just happened to be brought in to play trumpet for this? Yeah. Kind of. I mean, we have a mutual friend that was kind of talking to April and trying to get her to hire me. And I had no idea that was going on. But Hire you or marry you? Uh, well, it, it... He was trying to set us up, but I was like, don't set me up. I'm too old for that. <laughs> and I was too old for her being a year older. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, it just, I, we met, uh, we had a rehearsal on a Wednesday, I think, and we met that night and then she left the house. Um, and then, uh, we had the show on a Saturday and then like a week and a half later, I think we had our first date. Wow. And the rest, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Now you're riding in RVs all over the country. <laughs> yeah. Not playing fixing, COVID at all. Fixing stuff constantly, uh, while kind of writing a book along the way. Right, uh, right, right. You guys are an awesome story. It's just so cool. And uh, as you have such a great family. Like, I've seen you guys in person working together, like putting the show together when I saw you live. And it's just like, what a great dynamic this whole thing is. And uh, you. I wish you all nothing but success, obviously. And uh, I'm there 
for the whole ride. I've been, I feel like I've been there from the beginning. It feels like I know I, I, I wasn't, but You're the uh, real one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like an OG Bernie sisters fan, but yes, you sure. are. <laughs> someday when you, when they're winning Grammys, uh, throw me we'll in. Call you. Yeah. I'd be like, I was on the Avids and beyond and people would be like, what, what are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we're, we're going to run out of time here. So thank you for coming on. I appreciate the time when you guys are so busy packing and doing all this stuff. You got a little, you got 40 minutes of rest. You're welcome. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so <laughs> much. Tripping. You've been power washing stuff all day. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so a little rest is good for you. Uh, all right. Yeah. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you down the road. Thank all right. you, Todd. Thanks, all right. Bye. Bye.